and welcome to a new video. This one's a DMC challenge for January 2023 and the vehicle is a Simca 1000 by Corgi. Originally in a chrome plated finish, they were produced from around 1965 onwards. As you can see this one has not had the life of Riley. Quite a lot of the chrome is missing, we're shy one tyre and the windscreen is in quite a shabby state as well. The intention is to try to re chrome this one, but I'm going to be using a mirror finish paint to try to mimic the uh, original. So, uh, right here at the beginning, and I've already drilled out the rivets and just split and open the case to see what we have got. Suspension seems to be all in good nick. So no issues there. Got the usual vac formed interior. And thankfully the screen isn't riveted into place on the top, so that's a bonus. I did was I was curious whether it was actually a metal body or a plastic one, which is uh, it turns out it is a metal body. Off with the tires, they're uh, they're pretty much dried out and scrap. So I'll end up having to order four new ones for it, I think. I should think after all of these years, it maybe deserves some new boots anyway. I'm just at the moment prying apart the uh, casting where it holds the rods for the suspension. Hopefully I'm going to ping the axle rods out. It's a bit of a risky business this because they're very easy to bend, but bit of patience and perseverance and they'll come out and obviously try not to stab yourself in the hand with the screwdriver is also a, a good practice. Okay and that's the first one out. Just get the other bit out now when I stripped off the paint with caustic uh, this hard yellow gloss was underneath which presumably was the ground coat for the whatever chrome finish they used on it so I had to resort to uh, stripping that off with paint stripper so I was condemned outside again with my flap wheel and uh, cleaning up the bodywork because the latest bunch of brushes I bought are all disintegrating and as you can see by the state of my jumper that was a desirable trade to be doing indoors so I got condemned out into the yard to do this part. Thanks Amazon. Try and remember not to order from that particular firm again. It's polishing up nicely. The bodywork's not in too bad a condition. This car was donated by a good mate of mine, Unicorn Man. He obviously didn't uh, trash his toys when he was younger because there weren't too many dents and chips in the body. Have you polished them all up now and give things a clean? Just giving them a spin on the turntable before we move to the painting section. I've it's it all up with grey primer and now I'm laying down a, a coat, a base coat sealer dark. It's my preferred medium for putting silver and gold metallics on. Um, the theory being that the black base helps you to get an even coat on. Because if you like, you're effectively trying to neutral, neutralise the black. Uh, it helps you to uh, keep an even... Uh, even coat on. Just flashing it off with a heat gun between coats because it wasn't a particularly warm day even though I was working indoors. Paint was taking a while to dry. Now I'm going in with um, the mirror paint now. It's um, the Stuart stamp sample stuff that uh, he sells. I normally use it with a brush quite confidently. It's the first time I've blown it through an airbrush. So I was a bit apprehensive. 
but it's really finely ground it didn't need any thinner or any other medium added to it that's straight from the bottle straight through the airbrush although obviously it was a little time consuming cleaning the brush out afterwards but it laid down nice and flat and since I was very changing front with this job I was fortunate enough to be able to just leave it alone for a few days and let it set up completely before I had to interfere with the body again so I was pretty satisfied with the results overall I didn't put a, a lacquer on it or anything else afterwards I just left the paint as it was I was fearful that if I put a coat of clear on it, it actually might have the effect of dull in the mirror finish. As you can see, it's going on quite well. Pretty happy with it. So a few days have gone by. And I'm just starting to do a few highlights. Obviously not a great deal I can do on this one, being that it's all a chrome body. So I'm filling in the stop and tail lights here. I took a look at it, some pictures online. It uh, would appear that it was a just a circular light split in two. Indicators at the top, stop and tail lights at the bottom. Nothing too elaborate. Can't actually say I've ever seen one of these on the road. So I hadn't got much of a frame of reference. I had to resort to googling it. They are only tiny though, so it took a little bit of picking away, but reasonably satisfied with those. Yep, I think the jobs are good in. Oh, bang the top on the paint, that must be all over now. So we're around the front end and once again not a fat lot of highlighting that I can do. I'm going to try something that's new to me with the headlights on this car. So first of all I'm filling them in with a little bit of white to uh, give them a bit of brightness and distinguish them from the colour of the body. As usual. Tiny little brush, bit of white. Having filled them in, this is a stuff called glossy accents from the world of card making or paper craft. And what you can do with this stuff is apply a kind of a, a blob of it, if you like, for want of a better word, which then, although it starts off a little milky looking, dries clear. And I'm hoping by the time I've finished applying it, that it will mimic um, a kind of a, a glass headlight, give them a bit of shape rather than just flat as they normally are. I'm kind of looking at it because this is my first go at using it, it hasn't laid down quite as flat as I would have liked. And I'm just adding a little bit more because obviously it's easy to add a bit more than try and take it away. I made my own decals for this one. I think the original number was number 8, but obviously I went for number 59. At some point in the future, I will do a little video and show you how I made these simple decals with the easiest software available that everybody's got on their PC. Nothing specialised about it. And... Having seen the basic principle, I'm sure you'd all be able to figure out how to do more little ablet stuff if that was what you wanted. And these are just printed with the inkjet printer onto uh, decal paper. I'm just kind of measuring them up and getting the sizes now because I just drew up some generic stripes knowing that I could cut them to size when I was ready. Nothing very high tech about it, just a uh, suck it and see kind of deal really. So 
So I'm applying, applying a bit of uh, decal adhesive here to get it to stick to the bonnet, uh, the boot rather, and, uh, or, and, and flip around the bottom of the lid. Although it's a rearranging car, so I suppose it really is the bonnet. While I've been doing that, I've had the decal soaking away and a bit of blotting paper, nice and wet. And I'm just applying with the help of my trusty paintbrush and tweezers. Try and push it down, keep it in the middle. I see if in doubt stick your finger in. Always a good idea. Not. And onto the centre one on the roof. It's always a temptation to keep fiddling about with these things. I have got a bit of, having used the, the adhesive, I've got a little bit of slippage and a bit of time to get it exactly where I want before it dries out and takes its finished shape. Three down, one to go. Obviously, a little bit of trimmage to do on that one. Giving it a good dose of microsol red, which will help the uh, transfers stick and take the shape of the bonnet and hopefully not lift for me, no silvering or anything like that afterwards when they've dried. And that's the last one in place. The centre ends up with a paintbrush while it's still damp and a bit pliable. And wrapping it round the front end of the bonnet. Just drawing off the excess now with a Q-tip. Very gently flattening out the odd little bit of bubbling that there is in the decal. And try not to move it too far. Rolling it down gently, rolling the bubbles out at the end. Patting it down on the front end of the bonnet. Just making sure all the rest of it's lying down nice and flat. Okay, pick it up for a visual. Looking good. And assembly time now. No spanky new tyres with Dunlop in the side of them, very posh. Some of the nicest ones I've had. All four in place. Uh, 
as I say, the uh, windscreen section doesn't glue it to place. It, it stands on four little uh, little plinths, little mould ends, which come into contact with the base plate when you put it on. So I'm just slipping the uh, plastic moulded seats into place, on with the base place, bit of super glue, and pop the rivets on. Give them a couple of seconds to go off. And we've got a roller. And here it is on the turntable. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you like the finished car. I hope you've enjoyed the video and you'll consider watching me again. Maybe click a like, think about subscribing. Appreciate you watching. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.